The F2 Freestylers, by far the biggest football channel on the entirety of YouTube, with 14.1 million subscribers and garnering over 3.2 billion views. The F2 have become a staple in football social media culture. However, there is something weird going on at F2 Freestylers, because if you look at their recent videos, there is something off. A lot of people have noticed one very key aspect of their channel is now missing. You look at the thumbnails, you look at the videos, and you realize one thing. Neither both members of the F2, Billy Wingrove or Jeremy Lynch, are in a video. No thumbnail, no video, nothing. The last time I could find a video with both Billy and Jeremy in dates all the way back to October 18th, 2021, for the epic stadium rooftop trick shot at the London Stadium. That means that we've gone over a year and a half without a single video of these two together, which is strange, but there is reasons. Now, of course, I'm sure you've seen a ton of videos on YouTube about these two, and really more specifically about Jeremy Lynch. I do not want this to be another cookie cutter kind of video, so I'll be going at it from a different angle. Yes, a lot of people know about the Wembley Cup. Yes, a lot of people know about best player in the ball Arsenal, all of that, right? But I want to dig deeper, do more to just scratch the surface and see what are they actually doing now? What may happen for the future? Things have got quiet too quiet. On their YouTube channel in the last 12 months, they have only uploaded 11 videos. The year previously, they uploaded 28, and the year previously were 31. So, it is fair to say that their uploads have slowed down. What about views? Well, the views are great, obviously, compared to any channel in the world, but for the F2, it is a bit of a drop. Don't get me wrong, 12 million views a month is still very impressive. However, comparing it back to where they used to be, they were hitting in the high 20s on a regular basis about a year ago, with their best month in the last three years being 42 million views. The growth of subscribers is a great indicator to showcase where the channel is going, and before when it used to gain 100,000 subs every month or so in this year of 2023, we have just hit June, and they have gained zero, which is a bit of a problem. So with the decline of views, decline of subscribers, decline of uploads, what has happened to the F2 freestylers? Well, that is what we're going to go into in today's video. Tell me down below in comments your thoughts on the F2 freestylers. A lot has been said over the last few years, but I feel like the dust has settled quite a bit now to delve into the F2. Smash a like button if you guys did enjoy, and also subscribe if you are new. And of course, you knew it was coming. MozillaDesigns.co.uk for the best football prints on the market. And of course, we've got a Father's Day sale up and coming. So make sure to use code FATHERS for 8% off. And let's get straight into it. The best way to start off this video is to go into a brief history of the F2 because you may have absolutely no idea who they are. And if you don't know who they are, then... I don't know what to say. The F2 freestylers nailed a genre in the football space for over a decade, with their most popular video having 83 million views. To showcase how many people that is, that is more than the entire population of the United Kingdom by an extra 16 million as well. Their videos, easily marketable, perfect for any football brand to attach themselves to. Sponsorships, working with footballers, working with football clubs. It also had that weird, satisfying nature that you get with ASMR videos that is a trend nowadays. Watching someone bang a volley from 25, 30 yards out with pristine execution, flying into the top bins of the net, is satisfying as hell to watch. That is the same reason why football challenge videos do so well, especially the likes of Chris Indy, who has got actual talent, unlike me, talent. The duo of the F2, of course, Jamie Lynch and Billy Wingrove, they've got remarkable talent at football freestyling or just nailing what it takes to be a football content creator, which almost sounds downgrading because many people ask the question of they've got skills, they've got some talent there, so why aren't they, why have they not gone further as they seem to have what you need to be a professional footballer. And when I hear this, I like to think that the F2 are a great example of just how hard, just how tough it is to actually become pro in football because the levels are just so far apart. Don't get me wrong, they wouldn't look 
too out of place if you just planted them to let's say a you know a conference premiership team if you planted them in let's say a Dagenham and Redbridge team they wouldn't look out of place but they wouldn't be starting I, I can assure you of that because the ability to strike a ball the ability to have a great first touch to have great skills is only one part of the game for example back in 2017 Jeremy Lynch did sign a semi-pro contract a short-term one with Billericay Town he scored a goal in semi-pro football in a 6-1 win against Hunkerford town in the FA Cup and then just didn't play too much. The club came out and said that Jeremy Lynch, he prioritised the F2 over playing for Billicky Town, which of course at a time with that being his main source of income, his main business venture, he had to prioritise and that makes complete sense. But I guess you never know where he could have gone to maybe. You can look up online them playing in a real match, mainly at charity events or the like or organised events at stadiums. But again, when you watch, you think, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. And they nailed this style for a long time, gaining insane opportunities opportunities working with Mbappe, Neymar, Roberto Carlos, but remarkably not with Ronaldo. I mean, Roto Shaw did a video with Ronaldo. How can the F2 freestylers not do it? Adidas, EA Sports, Barcelona, Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, everyone. You could have a unlimited range of ideas that you can create with the F2. So what happened then? Well, I didn't even notice until literally about last week that just because the F2 aren't uploading, it doesn't mean they aren't uploading. I present to you the Jeremy Lynch YouTube channel and the Wingrove family. Clearly the lack of videos on the F2 channel has been taking a hit as both Jeremy and Billy have technically split up with both going their very own directions. Jeremy going down the TikTok route with a massive following over there and with his YouTube being a, an interesting mix of videos. I don't really know how to explain what it actually is. There's not been many videos about actual football on his channel, weirdly enough. The most popular series on his channel have been his nine-year-old series. Nine-year-old me kicking the football over the fence, 28 million views. I mean, if it works, it works. With Billy going down a different route altogether, making a lot more football content recently, but also really showcasing his family side too, as his channel is called The Wing Grow Family. Showcasing his life with his family and also sharing the great opportunities that he's gained by sharing it with them too, which I think is really cool. Most popular video being FUT Card Battle, 80 million views, and also a, a family series of him playing against Fogden and Fogdad, and also Wayne Rooney and his son as well. Now, of course, we do need to address the elephant in the room here. There are some reasons that are public that we can see why both Billy and Jeremy are no longer working together. The most obvious one being the incident at the Wembley Cup. I'm sure you've already seen it, so I'm just going to kind of gloss over it because it's been documented like a thousand times. The Wembley Cup 2018 and throughout this event there was a few bits of beef going around and it all circulated around Jeremy Lynch. If it was with Spencer FC, if it was with Stephen Tries at Etso, a member of their team that went by the name of Man Like Hacks as well. And I remember at the time thinking, Christ, I, I, I kind of feel from a little bit. Type up Jeremy Lynch on YouTube. You see 3.4 million views, 2.7 million views, 1.5 million views, 1.3 million views, 2.1 million views, 2.5, 2.4. The list can go on. There's a video just titled six minutes straight of Jeremy Lynch being a mug and it's got 1.3 million views. Clearly, Jeremy, or Jezza, he had this coming. Granted, I just watched that six minutes straight of Jeremy Lynch being a mug video, and half of it is not even of Jeremy Lynch himself. It's about that man like Hacks guy, which he actually seems much worse than what Jeremy actually is. The other half is him being just unnecessarily toxic um, towards Spencer Owen. The other massive thing about Jeremy Lynch was his remarkable claim of being the best player on the ball at Arsenal, including the first team back in the Invincible season. Uh, and of course, anyone with a brain in football can tell you that is just looks. But uh, maybe he was at Arsenal. Maybe he was part of the academy. And um, that also turned out to be not true too. Fabrice Marambo went on to Jack and Mate's podcast, the Happy Hour podcast. You know, he got brought this question about Jeremy Lynch playing for Arsenal at the same time as what Fabrice Marambo actually played for Arsenal. And he has no idea about who he even is. This was his reaction. Did you play in the academy with somebody called Jeremy Lynch. Jeremy, the, the YouTuber? Yeah. Not sure. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Jeremy Lynch claims that he played in the Arsenal Academy what age? during the Invincible season. Is it? And he said that Arsene Wenger claimed that he was the best on the ball player at the club, the whole club, including the first team. I mean, everybody have a dreaming experience, <laughs> but I don't think Arsene's... <laughs> 
Because if Arsenal says that, you're staying in the club. <laughs> so when you were no, when wait. you were 14, he was 15. He's there. My the, the, the year below ab- above me, he wa- he went in there. No, no. And I know every single body in that year above me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know everybody in that year above me. So you're telling me he's played with with, with Cesc Fabregas then, because Fabregas he was a year above me. <laughs> so that's the the squad. <laughs> Can I get up? Matter of fact. <laughs> He's come with for a seat. My year and the year above me. So you tell me where's Jeremy in there. Okay, so I'm looking at the picture now that Fab's shown me. Um, this is the clip. For me, I'm not a professional because I was at Arsenal. I was on my way to being a professional. Got released because they said, on the ball, you're the best at the whole club, including the first team. I was only 15 at the time. The best. But they said, off the ball. <laughs> He's taking his headphones off. No, no, no. <laughs> You're not having that, no, Fab? No, no, no. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Jeremy, I think you need to respond to that, my friend. Cause... I, I'd love to uh, just to, to name me who, who was his coach or just some type of something. Yeah. Then I'd be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea of him being best in the body or club is just you know, a lie. Um, it's not the worst lie in the world. It's not like it's actually going to get him cancelled or anything, but it's just a silly lie. Granted, I must say, it, it was years ago. Like, I don't think him saying this all these years ago should really stick with him now. Like, he said something stupid in a Q&A about almost a decade ago. I just move on. What I will say about Jeremy Lynch is that do I think he has maybe looked at himself in a different way, doing things a bit differently to change how people may perceive him? No, I don't think so, really. Jeremy is... Jeremy, he's very polarising, I think, in his personality, but he is him, and that is something that, even with everything that's come his way, I do somewhat respect the fact that he has stuck to himself, that that is just who he is, and if you like him, you like him, if you hate him, you hate him, and that is the way it is. He's gone down a route of making more sort of child-friendly content. The editing style is very, very similar to what you'll see with TikTok and that. The entire Stephen Tries situation as well. Stephen Tries has his ways to wind people up, and clearly his personality and his way of humour just didn't work with Jeremy at all, as Jeremy appeared to take himself a bit too seriously, and not really learning to take a step back and laugh at himself, which I think is important for people to do to not take themselves too seriously. Like, of course, I've not really said, but like on my Twitter in the last like month, you've probably noticed that there's just a, a mammoth amount of Poland comments and my wife and kids in the, the comments as well, which it is what it is. I mean, with Twitter, people find something to attach you to. It happens to everyone when you reach some sort of, I guess, attention online. People will always try a way to dig at you. And yo, look, if the people that try to dig me with Poland and my wife and kids, if that's the main thing they can use against me, I'm fine. <laughs> that's sick. I actually don't mind. People aren't having a go at me for being a bad person or something. It's just like things that I'm proud of my family, you know, of me actually trying to go out and do things with my life. And if people are upset that I'm sharing that with my followers, then it's not for you. And if you don't like it, then block me, I guess, you know, that's just how it is. No one actually cares unless you're doing something that's actually egregious and actually worthy to get angry at you for. It just becomes a bit of a meme. But hey, enough about Jeremy because a lot of videos have gone into about Jeremy. Of course, we had to cover him to a good enough level because that is the main reason why they have appeared to have split up. Now, the reasoning is somewhat blurry. Is it purely a business-related decision by both Billy and Jeremy to split up? Or is it actually a falling out between those two? Personally, I think it's a bit of both. Billy has come out of this in a very good light. That's throughout everything that has happened. Billy has always appeared to be professional and just an all-around just decent guy. When you go on his Instagram or you go on his YouTube, it is just a good vibe. Him with his kids from any of the pictures, just showing a normal family lifestyle, which, which I do like to see a lot. And the very same thing can be said for his YouTube channel, showcasing his life with his family and transitioning smoothly to integrating the football content with his family as well. This is something that I could only dream of having for myself and something that I aspire to have as well in the future. Happy families, playing football, having all these great opportunities. It's it's a, it's a dream, man, and it's, it's really great to see. And also one cool thing as well is the fact that Jeremy Lynch is becoming a father as well. And only two weeks ago, they announced that he will be having a baby with his partner 
partner too, which I think is also really great and shows how old we really are getting. I do think that over time, I think the personalities of both Billy and Jamie have contrasted too much that eventually it will just fade away off going their very own ways, but doing separate videos on the same F2 channel. And it is a shame because they were something incredible many years ago. However, the F2 are still getting good views a month, you know, over 10 million views with only a few uploads a year is still very impressive. So they could have that baby just making money for them for years without even doing anything with it, which is technically the dream. It's just consistent income for doing nothing. So yeah, the point of this video is, is really more about Jeremy in terms of, I think the stick that he got at a time, his critique was justified. However, I feel like the relentless nature of it was a bit far at times. Like, was he seen as a bit rude at times? Yeah, but, but I feel like people can easily just go a bit too far with it at times. So yeah, that's my thoughts and that's the update on the F2. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Smash the like button and also subscribe if you are new. I think we hit like 3,000 subs in like three days, which is insane. So thank you and yeah, I'll see you next time.